Hey, what's up, guys? You're now listening to Devo with Uncle Theo. Today is day 121, and we made it to 2 Kings. Today, we're going to cover 2 Kings chapter 1 and 2. Not much is going to change with how we move through 2 Kings, because to be honest with you, in the Jewish Bible, there is no division between 1 and 2 Kings and 1 and 2 Chronicles. That's our English division. And so this is really considered one unit. And so as we walk through it, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see the oscillating between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And we'll get to make observations along the way. For instance, we move into chapter one of Second Kings and we get a glimpse of the northern kingdom. Let's read verse one. Now, Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab and Azariah fell through the lattice of his upper chamber, which was in Samaria and became ill. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baazabub, the god of Ekron, whether I will recover from this sickness. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baazabub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Then Elijah departed. Now we see the word, the angel of the Lord here in verse three. And I want to be honest with you. It's hard to interpret whether this one is the pre-incarnate Christ. Sometimes we'll see that word and it could be a messenger of the Lord, just an angel delivering a message. And sometimes it's clear that it's Yahweh himself. And I've made the argument from previous books on why I believe that's the second person, mainly because Yahweh the father is always depicted as reigning from heaven. And Jesus is always depicted as being on earth. And the spirit is differentiated with that term. And even we have some New Testament passages that support my argumentation. But we see some practical application here that because Ahaziah doesn't consult with the Lord, he consults with Baazabub, God tells him that you will surely die. Then we get more details about Elijah. In verses 7 and 8, it says, He said to them, What kind of man was he who came up to meet you and spoke these words? They answered him, saying, He was a hairy man with a leather girdle bound about his loins. And he said, This is Elijah the Tishbite. So because Ahaziah fails to consult Yahweh, the true God, and he consults a false God, the true God who had the ability to heal him from his injuries would not. And you see he has a leather girdle bound about his loins. Where have we heard this language also at? In the New Testament, right, with John the Baptist. This is why he said to come in the spirit of Elijah, because you see a lot of overlap even here in their dress. Then from verses 9 on down, it says that the king sent to him a captain of 50 and went up to him, and, and behold, he was sitting at the top of the hill, and he said to him, O man of God, and that's one title for a prophet that we'll see in Scripture. There are a few of them, prophet, man of God, seer, and a few others. And he tells them to come down. And Elijah replied to the captain of 50, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. And so you see here that Elijah has similar capabilities of Moses and the Lord authenticates Elijah just like he does with Moses. And the angel of the Lord tells Elijah to go down and not be afraid. And that's how chapter one ends. Verse 17 says, So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And because he had no son, Jehoram became king in his place. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And don't let hearing the word Jehoram twice confuse you. This is what I was talking about with the Amri conspiracy. So what Umrah does is he tells his children, look, if we can't beat them, join them. I want you all to intermingle and marry the southern tribe and become one and confuse the line of Judah. And that's what you start to see here. If you look at the list of kings after Jehoshaphat and Ahab, you'll see Ahaziah here and then a Jehoram here, Ahaziah on the northern kingdom, then a Ahaziah on the southern kingdom. Then you'll see a Jehoram on the north. Then you'll see a Jehoram on the side and you'll see this right after Umri. And it just shows that the nations are 
becoming one and intermingling and mixing. And it won't happen until, remember when God said he'll raise up Jehu? Well, Jehu is going to stop this. He's going to stop the Umrah conspiracy because he's going to get to a point where a queen is going to take over by the name of Atalia. And she's going to try to destroy the royal household of Judah. It's going to find its climax with her. So pay attention to this and note this and don't be confused by the kings with the same names. I just wanted you to know that something that something more sinister was going on behind the scenes. But as we move into chapter two, Elijah is taken to heaven. It says in verse one, and it came about when the Lord was about to take up Elijah by a whirlwind to heaven, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. So Elisha will not leave Elijah even when they go to Jericho. And we're going to pick up reading here in verse six. It says, then Elijah said to him, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now, 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood opposite of them at a distance. While the two of them stood by the Jordan, Elijah took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters, and they divided here and there, so the two of them crossed over the dry ground. So you see another water parting miracle. We hadn't seen this since Moses and even Joshua. And so Elijah is being linked to Moses several different ways to show that he is a true serious prophet in scripture. So no wonder at the Mount of Transfiguration, guess who shows up? Moses and Elijah. So let's keep reading in verse nine. When they crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit upon me. He said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be. As they were going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elijah saw it and cried out, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Then he took hold of his clothes and tore them into two pieces. He took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and returned and stood by the bank of the Jordan. So I want you to notice something here. We see one thing that Elisha is going to get a double portion of the power that Elijah has, but we need to pick up something else regarding scripture. Where is Elijah taken up at? He's taken up at the river Jordan. And so this teaches us that one of the major prophets of scripture is last seen at the river Jordan. Now, let me show you something. When we get to the New Testament, where does John the Baptist show up with his ministry? At the River Jordan. Why does he do that? He's linking to Elijah. In your head, you should have said a major prophet was last seen at the River Jordan. And now another prophet is on the scene, the same type of Nazarite. And he's picking back up at the Jordan and moving history along. He's introducing the true king. So this is what the gospels are trying to do for you. Picks up with a man wearing a leather belt, eating curd, eating honey with a diet of honey and locusts. And your mind is supposed to link to Elijah to say, wow, to say, wow, scripture is picking back up. We have a real prophet on the scene and he's anointing the king. I wonder, is this king the seed? And notice Jesus is going to immediately go into being tested in the wilderness, linking himself to Israel and to David and passing his test, proving that he's the true king. And see, second Kings right here would have set that up for you. And you should have been anticipating that in the New Testament and it should have strengthened your faith. And I'm hoping that this would do this now that you're so linked and connected to the Old Testament. So we have the taking up of Elijah. And so Elisha continues in the miracles of Elijah. He has a double portion. The chapter ends with him purifying and cleansing the water. Verse 21, he puts salt in spring water and thus it purified the water. And it says, thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters. There shall not be from it death, 
or unfruitfulness any longer. And so we're going to start to see the ministry of Elisha as we continue. But now we're setting the stage for not only kingship, but for prophets, because now prophets really are our true kings. Why do I say that? It's because they're the ones who are operating according to the word of the Lord. And those are the ones that the Lord is using right now. And so you be encouraged. You don't have to have an office or a position to be used by God. God is looking to show himself faithful on one who would take his word serious and operate according to the word of the Lord. If you do that, my friend, you'll be blessed immensely. So wherever you are in your faithfulness, make sure you're not just doing it to get results, not just doing it for a title or not doing it for the three P's, for position, for performance or for positions. Make sure you're doing it for praise to the praise and glory of your father, which is in heaven based on the merit of Jesus Christ. And in that, you shall produce much fruit and have much power because you're doing things according to the word of the Lord. You guys take care. Catch you next time. Yeah.